Good evening everybody and welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Home Stay at Home Live Cooking Demonstration Series. So we're on a very warm Thursday night tonight. Uh, on the way home from the store it showed 95 degrees on the uh, on the vehicle. So it's pretty toasty out here. No problem whatsoever. It's still a beautiful evening. Uh, actually in the shade it's not too bad. But the dinner that we're cooking tonight is both a little bit more on the healthy side and it's super fast. So we won't even have to do segments on this where we cut and come back so that we don't... Uh, run 20 minutes on a video. Once we get started here on this, we're gonna cook this entire thing in probably five or six minutes. Uh, very fast, one of my favorite meals to cook, uh, which is tonight we're gonna to do the seared uh, ahi tuna steaks on the big green egg and the cast iron skillet. So uh, I came home, got the egg lit and cruising at about 425 degrees uh, while I was inside in the, in the AC, cause it is very hot out here. There was just no need to sit out here and watch it come up to temp, so. 10, 15 minutes, we're ready to go. Well, I got the other items ready to go. You can see as the camera operator is showing, we've got just, as we've shown before, about a finger's opening on the top on the regulator cap. If you have the older style uh, daisy wheel, that would be equivalent to the holes open. And then we've just got a couple, an inch or so down below. Uh, I'm actually gonna crank that a little bit because we are going to want to ramp up a little bit here. So I'll open the top and bottom. Uh, to get things going, we want a hot skillet. So you can see we've got some coal burning in there. I'm gonna get this in place so that can start preheating. I'm actually gonna move the handle to the back. I guess it really doesn't give me more space and it makes me feel like I do. So we have sashimi grade ahi tuna steaks here. A couple of them, it doesn't take a whole lot. They're very rich. One of my favorite pieces of fish. It's, I call it the steak of the, of the sea. It tastes like steak unlike any other fish. One thing I wanna do when we get started here is pay attention to which way the grain is running. And we'll explain why when we actually get to the uh, end of the cook. But you can see this one's kinda of got the circular grain. Probably has something to do with what part of the fish it came from. Um, I'm not a scientist, I don't know, but I can tell most of the grain is gonna do better if it's going this way. So I'm gonna make a slight incision there so I know which way. And this one, you can tell it's going the, the same direction, so. Don't want to cut it in half, but just make a little mark there so it'll be easier to tell once all the sesame seeds and everything are on there. Basically what I did with the uh, tuna steaks was just give them a quick rinse in the sink and then pat them dry with a paper towel. You want them good and dry because your seasoning and everything will actually stick to it better uh, and get a better char if it's not moist on the outside. As far as seasoning goes, we're just gonna take and do a little bit salt and pepper. Well, here I'm gonna do that on each side. <laughs> and it's hot out here. Our lovely golden retriever has now decided she doesn't want to be out here, even though she did just two seconds ago. All right, so I'm gonna turn that back over. UPS truck is here now. We got all kinds of noises going on tonight. Everybody's running right on time. I don't think we have a package showing up tonight. But... Okay, once I get that done, sesame seeds. My favorite thing to put on the outside to get that crust. So I've got regular sesame seeds and black sesame seeds. And I'm just gonna, it's easier to do this in a, in a plate. You could kind of sprinkle it on there, but you really want to get a pretty good amount on there so it's much easier to just dump these in a plate get amped up there we'll shut that and i'm just going to kind of mix those up okay i'm going to throw the asparagus on because we're going to cook that at the same time and you'll see here in a second that uh Tuna's not going to take long at all. As a matter of fact, let's get our using coconut oil. You can use olive oil, you can use just about anything, but with the higher temp that we're, we're going to be searing these at, you want an oil that can kind of take the heat. Coconut oil, I think, is uh, up there in the 400s or so, so it's going to be able to take the heat pretty well. We're not deep frying, but you do want a pretty good amount of 
oil and let that start heating up. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take our tuna steaks, kind of set them in the sesame seed, pat it down so that the sticks to it, get the other side real good. And it takes quite a bit. You want that sesame seed crust on the outside at the end, so don't be afraid to add more if you need to. You can even take some of the seeds and put them on there and kind of push it into it. Just about ready. Oh yeah, there we go, making a mess. <laughs> this is also why I like to do it outside even when it's hot. Because the mess out here is much easier to clean up. This bigger steak looks really good. I'll take that one. I was thinking that was mine, but not gonna argue. Okay, that's what they should look like. Just get that little spot right there. Let those rest there on the plate for a second. Those are not gonna take long at all, so I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, done with the gloves. We'll get our asparagus. I'm just going to grill the asparagus hot and fast here. And the good news is I've got room for it right next to the to the skillet here. It goes without saying, but you want to make sure you're going the right way on your grids. Otherwise, they all fall into the grill. So think about that before you get started. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shut my bottom draft door. I don't need any more. Couple flames there. I'm gonna guess our skillet is good and hot. You don't have to use a timer here, but you definitely wanna pay attention because we are only going to sear these. I'm actually gonna do the asparagus just a little bit longer first because that's probably gonna take on that. Uh, we're doing sashimi gray tuna. You wanna make sure you, uh, you know where your tuna is coming from when you do this. Obviously you don't wanna just get anything run of the mill. Because we're, we're just going to flash sear that about 30 seconds each side. So it is sushi grade tuna. You could eat it raw, and we're not going to be too far from that. You want the char on the outside, but it's still going to be uh, that same color in the center. That's the goal, anyway. With the thinner, sometimes you get the uh, tuna steaks that are thicker, those are easier to work with, but we're going to have to be pretty fast on this to make sure we don't uh, overcook it. It will not take long at all. Also doesn't take long on the asparagus. And my thinking is always to start with the veggies because if worst case scenario, one finishes before the other, I'd rather have my veggies take a rest. And not the tuna. You see, we're starting to get some smoke on the uh, coconut oil. That's not the end of the world, but that definitely means it's hot. And it's hot outside. This is a real quick, easy meal though, and delicious. Appreciate everybody watching. We'll keep doing this as long as you're watching every week. No matter what the temperature is outside. Requests would be nice. Yes. Any requests you have for cooking examples that we haven't already done before, whether it's a dessert, it could be a breakfast, a dinner, a lunch, anything including dessert options that you want to see how, how it's done on the eggs. If we don't know how to do it, that's what Google is for. We'll look it up and love to see some more ideas because we are starting to run out of uh, our recipe book is just getting pretty, pretty empty. All right, we have a super hot skillet there. We're going to go ahead and get this done. I'm just going to take these carefully, place them right inside the hot oil pan here. Nice thing about doing this, unlike a steak where you kind of have to guess in the middle, with tuna steaks you can literally almost watch the line kind of come up through the steak so you know it's, it's just going to be a matter of seconds here and we're going to flip it. We just want to get that char. Get 
probably 20 seconds even, not very big. That still is getting hot. You can always turn it back over if you need to. back here a little bit, get into that flame. Okay, I'm gonna pull this one off. We're gonna put it right on the cutting board. I'm going to get just a little bit of carbon to the side. I'm going to call that You do not want to overcook these. I'm going to let those set for just a second. Make sure our asparagus is first, and then we're going to get the skillet off of there, too. Just kind of turning these over to make sure we cook all the way through. You can usually tell by texture if they start to get just a little bit flimsy, they're done. Both of these, you don't want to overcook the fish or the asparagus. And of course, these can go right back in the same plate with the seasoning and the olive oil. As you can see on a hot night when it's 95 degrees outside, or you might rather be inside, this is a great meal for that. We're, we're done. It took uh, less time to cook that than it did the, the 10 minutes to get the egg up to temp. So that's all shut down. We'll take a breather here and then we'll let that cool down for just a second and we'll make our plate. So the entire meal, we have a grilled asparagus that was uh, seasoned with olive oil, salt, and pepper. And then we have wild, uh, wild green, wild rice, long green, wild rice. Sorry, heat's starting to get to me, I guess. Need a good knife for this. You need a fork, of course, if you're gonna eat it. We'll let that rest just another minute. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Of course, don't remember the the store is open. We're taking don't all remember. the safety precautions. Huh? Don't remember. Oh, sorry. Don't forget. <laughs> of course, the store is open. We're doing all the safety precautions to keep everybody safe. And just because we have to stay at home, which we don't have to stay at home now, but doesn't mean we have to stay inside. Get outside and try something new on the grill. Okay. We have everything we need here. Let's go ahead and actually first... We've got our rice here. You can see I'm making a mess. Biggest advantage of cooking outside is so much easier to clean the mess. Brush that off into the grass there and get to go. Okay. Don't have to do anything fancy here. We'll put a little rice on there. Whose plate is this so I know how much asparagus to grab? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Put a little asparagus. Breeze is nice. Yeah, so it's suddenly starting to cool down a little bit. I don't know if you got rain coming or it's wishful thinking. Okay, so now on our tuna steaks, we did that, uh, in that line that we made on both of these. Let's see if I can find it on this one. back the camera up to make sure we're <laughs> it won't be the end of the world if you don't do this but the reason why we did that we'll carve uh, we'll carve this one first is I did I showed which way the grain was running if you've watched previous videos and probably I think just about every other cut that you would ever cut uh, besides this you go against the grain when you're cutting tuna steaks you want to go with the grain uh, if you try it the other way or if we got it wrong on one of these you would actually figure out pretty quick because it will actually start falling apart on you Instead, instead of the nice clean cuts that you want to have. So I'm just going to kind of grab a hold of it here and start making this nice 
thin. I like to cut these into thin strips. You could do this and put this on a salad. You can see we just got that char on the outside. If this is not your thing, you could certainly cook it a little bit more, but I can tell you, this is the flavor profile that you're going for. When you try it this way, it literally tastes like steak. Usually you would even pair a um, white wine to go with fish. When you do tuna steaks, in my opinion, you've got that salt and pepper on there and that crust. Uh, this is where you get that big, that big fat oaky cab out. Uh, it's going to go much better, much better here. So I'm just going to use my fingers and kind of put some of this on the plate here. Okay, next step is soy sauce. You can do low sodium if you like. I prefer the uh, leaded version. And I do like, this is my one weakness, I do like soy. You wanna get a fair amount on there, and let it absorb in. Don't go shy. This is the one time that I have a weakness for sodium. And then very important, this is my favorite. There's different versions of the wasabi. You can get it in a jar. Some people, uh, you can do the powder version where you make your own, but I like the S&B in these little tubes. It's like a little tube of paste. Uh, you can really control exactly how much you have. So what I'll do is just make a little, you could do this on the edge of the plate, but you want to make just a little line. This stuff is very strong. It's not going to take much. I might use a little bit more than that. The other fun thing about this recipe is as you, when you're eating this, especially with your uh, significant other or even as a family, it's it somehow always becomes a competition with the wasabi because what we're going to do here, we'll actually take a virtual bite on the camera. Uh, but what you're going to do here is you're going to take a piece of the the tuna steak. That's why you want the wasabi. Actually, that needs a little bit more soy because you want just a On the camera, I was a little shy to end up going too much there. But you really do want that profile. And the two mixed together, it's, it's like prime rib with the au jus. Uh, and then just take that however much you dare as far as that. And it has a tendency in the evening, you just keep getting bigger and bigger bites until somebody somebody actually hurts himself. You wanna go first? Or is that? I'll see you cry. If you wanna see me cry, I should get a little <laughs> more. This stuff is, uh, it's, wasabi is Japanese horseradish. And I think it's actually stronger than most regular horseradish, but uh, it can definitely, it can definitely get you. So since we're on camera, I've got a pretty good job on there. Mm. Not enough to make me cry, but it's definitely, that is so good, so good. All right, so I wish the I wish we could see the comments because I'd love to know how much they would like to see the camera operator have. <laughs> Maybe the rest of that, or, or just a touch. Be nice. And you got to watch. Sometimes it doesn't stick, but you're still getting the flavor. What do you think? Enough or a little more? Let me see. Good. Good with that. Yep. Okay, here it comes at the camera. Seared sashimi, tuna steaks, sesame seed crust. Mm. Got the soy sauce over the top, fresh wasabi. Yum. Grilled asparagus, and then the long grain wild rice. So super fast. I don't know what the time. It'll be on the on the meal there. You can see we didn't have any cuts whatsoever. We're at about we're already, 18 minutes 18 minutes total and that includes me doing a bunch of talking that i normally wouldn't do and i could probably cut it in half on that so now we'll be able to go back inside in the ac because it is 95 degrees when we got home tonight so once again thanks for watching and we'll see you next week